Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you user permissions and role management in GitLab. So let's get started with that right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually open up a new lab.leveluptuts.com in an incognito window so I won't be logged in. And you'll be able to see we will be greeted with this sort of login asking if we're an existing user and allow you to create an account. Now, the problem with this is, is that I want this to be private. So I don't want people to create an account. I want to create an account for them. So if we were to actually head to admin area and then let's go ahead and head to users. Let's come to the admin area. Then we can scroll this down until we get to settings. As you can see, we have some settings here. If we scroll down, we can see that we can have sign up or sign in enabled, right? If you are the only person using this, you can disable the sign in and nobody else can use it. However, let's just go ahead and uh, disable this sign up. And we can scroll down, scroll down all the way down and let's click save. Now when I head to my incognito window and I refresh here, you can see we just have a sign in window. So now only people that already have accounts can actually use this. Well, that's great, but we actually want to have somebody with another account. So as an administrator, I'm going to come in here and let's head to users. I can click new user and let's give them a name. We can just have this be Courtney. Let's say I wanted to give Courtney access and this can be her username can be C note. All right. And I can just say, Courtney at level up tuts. She doesn't actually have a level up tuts email address. So don't email her here. It won't get anywhere. And as you can see, when we create an account, it's going to send them a generated password link that they can log in with. And now we can say what sort of access they have. Well, maybe you can give them a limit for projects, right? They can only create a certain amount of projects or they can be an admin or they can create their own group. I'm going to uncheck all of these. And the one I want is actually external. And now what I want here is I want her to have only access to the private repos and projects when I want to. Now in the future, I'm going to be creating a group and giving that group access to this. But for right now, we're going to leave this checked as external so that she doesn't really have any sort of capabilities offhand. We can click create user. And what's cool about this is we now have this user's page. We can see if they have SSH keys, um, identities, groups, accounts, all sorts of stuff here. We can block them. We can delete them. Uh, but basically, this is the user's account. And let's say I wanted to see exactly what Courtney has access to. What I could do here is I could click impersonate and now I'm accessing GitLab as her. And you can see I don't have access to any projects. I don't have any projects. If I see, I can only see to do's activity groups in projects itself. I can't create any projects because I don't, I don't have the capabilities to create any sort of projects. So let's say this is a user that you just want to have access to give access to your code. Uh, and maybe they can download or see your repos or something like that. Let's go ahead and actually modify our project in a new tab. And I'm actually going to stop impersonating for a minute. Now, make sure that you're in the admin area. If you're not, go ahead and click admin area here. What we want to do is head to projects then select administrator test. And you can see we have project members over here where we can now give access and we can say, let's give access to Courtney and let's add her to this project. So she now has access to this project as a guest. And you might be wondering, what is a guest? Well, we can read more about these rules right here. A guest can create issues, leave comments, see build, see build log and download and browse artifacts. However, they can't do things like pull the project code, download the project, or create code snippets. Now to do that, you'd want them to be a developer. Now this is just a really nice interface. You can see exactly we have guest, reporter, doc, developer, master, and owner. And pretty much the only thing that a developer can't do 
is do things that are going to essentially break the project here. We can't have them add new team members, so you can't add somebody who's going to be an admin and destroy it. They can't push to protected branches. Uh, basically, a whole bunch of stuff here. We can't add deploy keys. Um, they can't configure hooks or runners or switch visibility levels, but basically they can create a wiki, add tags, create issues, manage merge requests, pull requests, whatever, see commit messages and push and pull from the code. So most people are probably gonna end up being developers unless they're owning a project or you wanna give them full master or owner rights. So let's actually click head back here and I'm going to uh, click Courtney here and click the edit button and I can make her a developer and click save. Now let's head back to the administrative area so we can click admin area up here. We can click users. Let's click Courtney here and let's impersonate her. Now I'm impersonating her. This is what she sees. She sees administrator test. Uh, I can click on this. I have access to the git path here. I can see the readme, I can see the commits. Notice how I'm still impersonating her. And this is definitely one of those things where uh, before she didn't have access to any of this stuff. And now she has access to this code and she'll need to add an SSH key if she wants to be able to pull from here. But as you can see, we have branches, commits, whatever. As a developer on this, they have access to all of this. Now let's say we didn't want this person to be a developer. Let's go ahead and click stop impersonation. We want them to actually not be an external developer, right? We want them to actually be somebody who can manage their own projects or create their own projects on the site. We can come in, click edit up top here, and we can scroll down. And let's go ahead and uncheck all of these, but let's give her, let's say 10 projects. So she's no longer, uh, she can't create a group She's not an admin, but she's also not external. So we can go ahead and click save. And now let's impersonate her to sort of see what's going on here. Now, instead of just having one project that we've been assigned to, we can actually create new projects ourselves. Uh, we can give them a new path and you'll notice it stores them at forward slash C note, her username. We can import a project from any of these other places such as GitHub at a description we can make it private, public, internal. So this can be seen by any logged in user or any public person. Let's go ahead and just create this public path. And this can be a C notes test project. I'm public. Okay. So this, this one is entirely public. We click create project. And now check this out. The lab.leveluptest.com forward slash cnote forward slash test project in an incognito window without being logged in is totally visible. And because they're public, anybody could come and pull this. You could see issues just like GitHub. So if you want to have your own open source projects here or even have several team members sharing open source projects or maybe just a group of people to have open source projects and not have it be on something like GitHub or Bitbucket, you can create that here and, and share these paths just like this. So that's that's pretty sweet. I mean, uh, if there's one thing that GitLab is, it's definitely full featured and fully capable of doing really anything you need it to. So here we have a public repo created by a user that I created because I'm not allowing sign up. So anybody who has a sign up can create one. So let's tab back. And let's go ahead and click this stop impersonation at the top. And as you can see, creating users, impersonating them, and sort of checking out their permissions is a great way to see exactly what people have access to and what they can do as a user on your GitLab. You don't want somebody who you don't trust to have access to be able to delete your projects and all sorts of crazy stuff or else you could be in big trouble. So here we have the admin area. We have a new user who has had both limited and a little bit more open permissions. Now you can always make trusted people admins. Let's check out what happens when you make somebody an admin. I'm gonna click edit and I'm gonna select admin here. Let's click save changes. And now this is site-wide, Courtney is now an admin. So when I click impersonate, you'll now notice that in addition to seeing uh, her repos, she can also see the admin area. In the admin area, she can come in 
and she can create a new user if she wants. Basically anything that you can do as an admin, she can do. So you're gonna be wanna be very careful about who you give admin rights to because those people are going to have full control over your GitLab. But as you can see, by unchecking everything, there we go. Uh, Courtney has just the permission she needs to create her own repos, but not only that, see private ones that she's been added to. But what happens if there's private repos that she hasn't been added to? I am no longer impersonating her, so let's go ahead and just create a new project really quickly. And we can say this is going to be a private, and this will just be root private test, okay? And we'll keep this all here as private, and there we go. Okay, so this exists under my projects. Uh, let's go back to the dashboard, see all the projects. You can see that my projects are private test and test. Okay, but let's see what, uh, let's head to admin area. Users, select Courtney. Let's see what she now has access to. We can click impersonate. And you can see she has access to administrator test and Courtney but if we click administrator test, or let's actually head to the path that's just forward slash root, the user page for root, she can see stuff where we have the push to a new branch at master administrator test because she's involved in this. But what she's not seeing is that I created a project called private. Because she's not involved in that project, although she isn't set to external, she still doesn't see that project at all. Cool. So I hope this was very informative. You now have access to basically set up your user accounts however you would like them within GitLab to be either as locked down or as open as you want them. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want the rest of these videos before they're released on YouTube, head to store.leveluptutorials.com. And there you can purchase these videos and actually get access to some exclusive videos such as how to add GitLab to an existing Ubuntu machine on a, a DigitalOcean droplet that's already been created. So you're not going to be doing this one touch install. And we're going to be going over some more advanced features. So check that out, store.leveluptutorials.com or become a pro by signing up at also at store.leveluptutorials.com by subscribing, becoming a pro. You also have access to streaming all of these videos before they're available on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.